This morning, AMD is releasing its latest CPUs, the Ryzen 3000 series, and with it, an army of supporting X570 powered motherboards, 35 to be precise, and I very much intend to uh, review uh, the greatest possible number, or at least the ones I can put my hands on. And today, we are going to start this glorious series with nothing less than the ROG Strix X570e from Asus. And with $115 premium over its predecessor, the Strix X470f, or even $100 more than its Intel equivalent, uh, the Strix Z390e, AMD better know what it's doing. And do you, AMD? The question is, do you? Very few release uh, can cause this kind of anticipation. Everybody's been talking about the X570 powered motherboards for the past two or three months, and that's because it comes with quite the technological evolution. Uh, the PCIe 4th generation, which will double the available bandwidth of its predecessor, the PCIe 3rd generation, and which we've been working with for the past four to five years. But as usual, as in every major technological evolution, nothing is as easy as it seems. All X570 powered motherboards hides another motherboard, meaning that if you run it with a Ryzen 2000 series, then your motherboard will be operating in a PCIe third generation, and that will have direct impact on everything else. Uh, how much data it can swap on its M.2 solid state drive and how fast it can operate its video card. But only coupled with AMD latest Ryzen 3000 CPUs can we hope to unlock the grail of holy grail, the PCIe fourth generation, which will have immediate and definite impact on our overall performances. I am saying this now because during the review, I will have to give you the different uh, specs and performances of every component, uh, depending of if you are running it with a Ryzen 2000 or Ryzen 3000 series processor. And starting with the obvious, the ROG Strix X570e comes in an ATX form factor, meaning 24.4 centimeter wide for 30.5 centimeter long. We have our usual AM4 CPU socket, which can both support the AMD second and third generation of Ryzen processors. We have an unprecedented 12 plus 4 50 amps phases, meaning 12 true CPU centric phases, which does not surprise me one bit knowing that the Ryzen 3000 series uh, will feature processors with as much as 12 or even 16 physical cores, which is double of what Intel can uh, produce right now, at least on the mainstream market, and uh, which will need every bit of power, not only to run smoothly, but to overclock uh, st with stability uh, in a nutshell. And with that many phases to spread our CPU electrical draw, there is no fear for overheating or thermothrottling. And in addition, let's not the beefier heat sinks than provided on the previous X470 powered motherboard. Memory wise, another noticeable upgrade here, coupled with a Ryzen 3000, the board can handle up to 128 gigabyte of DDR4 RAM, overclockable up to 4.4 gigahertz. And this is the very first time I see an AMD motherboard overclocking its memory that high. And that's one of the main improvements and upgrades that the Ryzen 3000 CPU slash X570 chipset combination bring to AMD computing as a whole. But if you are going to run this motherboard with a Ryzen 2000, you will be able to overclock those same 128 gigabyte of DDR4 RAM at still a very impressive yet stable 3.6 gigahertz. Staying in the memory, the Strix X570e supports a dual M.2 solid state drive configuration. Now, with a Ryzen 3000 series and a PCIe 4.0 compatible M.2 solid state drive, we can hope to see speeds up to 55 or even 60 gigabit per second. That is almost double that what you can hope to achieve with a Ryzen 2000 CPU and a normal or classic 
M.2 solid state drive, which can only or only run up to 32 gigabit per second. It translates in an immediate and definite performance increase. But of course, with all this data transfer, there is a lot of overheating and thermal throttling and that is why the Strix comes with rather good quality thick and heavy thermal padded heat shields. Now quick note on the chipset itself, the X570 chipset uses twice the usual wattage used by uh, the X470, 11 watt in total and to keep it from overheating it comes pre-installed with an auto adjustable fan. It does get hot and, and uh, the fan makes some noise but as long as you keep your motherboard behind your tempered glass you won't hear anything. Export wise, we have five fourth generation PCIe Expresses, and, and that is what all the fuss is about. Two single speed and single slot, three 16 slots with different speeds. As usual, only the first 16 slot can deliver up to 16 PCIe lanes. If you are going for a single GPU configuration, this is where you want your video card to be. If you are going for a dual GPU configuration, lanes will be shared amongst both of our PCIe slots, giving us an 8x8 bus speed. And in an improbable three-way crossfire GPU configuration, our lanes will further be divided, giving us an 8x4x4 by four by four bus speed configuration. Now, since these two slots are more likely uh, to carry the heavy weight of our video cards, obviously they've been metallically reinforced, which is always a good idea. Again, you need to consider the fact that if you are running this motherboard with a Ryzen 2000 series, all those PCI Expresses will revert back to PCI third generation, which is half the bandwidth provided by the fourth generation. And a lot of you and viewers would comment uh, that it is more than enough, that PCIe 3 is more than enough simply because there's no known video cards on the mainstream market which can use all of the bandwidths provided by the PCIe third generation. But you do need to take into account that at every generation of video card release, about every two years, for example, by NVIDIA, the bandwidth increase is greater than a quarter or a third, meaning that for the PCIe, uh, meaning that for the PCIe third generation, uh, in a year or two, it'll be the bottleneck of the next generation of NVIDIA video cards. So I would think, and I would argue that having the PCIe 4.0 right now puts us in the safe space. It is a logical evolution right here and uh, provides somewhat of a future proofing for the next four or five years. Storage wise, we're dealing with a classic and well established 8 SATA 3.0 uh, plugs, which can transfer data up to 6 gigabit per second each and able to run in RAID 0, 1, 5, and 10. Otherwise, let me first note the presence of an integrated plate, which is always a good thing for first time builder. And let me say also, um, that this is much more advanced. The features we have on this IO and this back IO are much more uh, advanced and much more <sighs> enthusiastically, professionally, whatever you want, driven than what you can have on a Strix motherboard. But I get back on this on uh, the conclusion. So starting from the left, we have another upgrade, a 1.2 display port, as well as an HDMI 2.0, a flashback button, four USB 3.2 plugs, which can run it. Wait, 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 I have to explain something here. I just said USB 3.2, and that's part of a larger controversy uh, because this is exactly the same standard I've been reviewing for the past two years. We're talking about the 3.1 first or 3.1 second generation. From now on, for some weird, strange reason I cannot make and I don't agree with, I have to call it 3.2 first or 3.2 second generation. And that's what I'm going to call it from now on because this is what you're going to see on your specs and this is what you're going to see uh, written on your motherboard. But just know this is exactly the very same thing we've been talking about before. So going back to our board, four USB 3.2 plugs which can run either in five gigabit mode when coupled with a Ryzen 2000 CPU or in a 10 gigabit mode when run with a Ryzen 3000 series. Next, we have four 3.2 second generation with a 10 gigabit bandwidth, including three type A and one type C. Two LAN plugs, one of which can transfer up to 2.5 gigabit per second, and the brand new sixth generation Wi-Fi 802.11a 
X, which in this configuration can transfer data up to 2.4 gigabit per second, which is quite more than the usual uh, 1.73 gigabit that we've seen on its predecessor, the 802.11 AC. Again, a quite large upgrade and something I'm extremely excited to see, even though this is an Intel provided chip uh it's it's so far only on amd x570 powered motherboard but something i think we're gonna see much more even on the newest uh, intel chipsets uh in the next coming couple of months or so and finally a rather premium 8 audio channel powered by an s1228 codec front usb connector wise we have two second generation USB plugs, one five gigabit 3.2 first generation, and finally one 10 gigabit 3.2 second generation type C front panel connector. An absolute USB monster. So, so far we've seen all the features directly linked to the X570 chipset upgrade. And already you can tell this is a bandwidth monster. And, and to take most of these unusually high performing component, at least for Strix. The, the, the Strix had to up the ante in different enthusiastness friendly features. And I'm gonna start uh, with seven nested PWM fans, one of which can be used with an all-in-one CPU water cooler and a five watt dedicated water pump for custom water cooling solutions. And obviously this will allow the most enthusiasts amongst you to develop the craziest and weirdest uh, custom water cooling solutions using this board. But where the Strix really differ or differs, differs from its predecessors and any kind of Strix out there is the fact that we have a QLED error screens. And that is a good move because giving the number of phases and all of the heat that all those higher performing components will produce, you also increase the chances of failed boots. So having a more advanced troubleshooting uh, with a QLED screen error is a very wise addition indeed. And in addition, we have our usual easy debugger which we find on every uh, ASUS entry level board and which will indicate us at what level of our boot sequence our boot failed. And, and this would not be an enthusiast board without a bunch, a bunch of RGB and even less a Strix motherboard, which always seems to take it a, a, a step further. And we're gonna start with two nested RGB strips, one under our IO roof and one under our chipset heat shield. In addition, we have an unprecedented four RGB connectors. Again, this is two more than the previous Strix generation. They come in pairs of uh, RGB addressable and normal RGB connector on both extremities of our motherboard for an easier access, which makes sense. I think that is something that I actually took from ours, from Gigabyte, and I really like that move. So basically, if you find yourself lost at sea, well, you can always use your Sirig to signal help on the land. In conclusion, well, that's not gonna be an easy conclusion, is it? The Strix X570e, or the Republic of Gamer Strix X570e will sell for about $330 before taxes. And like I said in the beginning of this video, this is about 110 bucks more expensive than its predecessor. Oh, and $100 above uh, Intel equivalent, the Strix Z390e. So what is AMD doing with this? First, this has nothing to do with your usual Strix motherboard. For one, look at the VRM configuration. We're talking about 12, 50 amps CPU-centric phases. This is as much as you will find on an Apex motherboard. And right here, you can justify quite of a heavy uh, price bump. But if you are planning to run this board with a Ryzen 2000, you're gonna find yourself with an overblotted, overfeatured, and overpriced uh, X470 motherboard. I would not advise you to buy any X570 motherboards if you are not going with a Ryzen 3000 series, which will truly unlock 
the PCIe fourth generation and what it can do in terms of performances, which is literally mind blowing. But if you are planning to go with the Ryzen 3000 series, this is where your money needs to be. And, and not only in contrast with other AMD powered motherboard, uh, but even against Intel powered motherboard, there's nothing, nothing more powerful and more performant than the Ryzen 3000 series coupled with the X570 motherboard. And especially if you're an enthusiast gamer, this Trix X570e has it all. And my only question left is if this is a Strix motherboard, what's going to be the Crosshair 8 Hero Edition? Yeah.